All right, welcome. Uh, my name is Greg. I'm uh, president and CEO of the Palm Coast Flagler Regional Chamber. A couple of quick announcements before we get started. Number one, today's uh, seminar is free thanks to a partnership and a grant that we have with CareerSource. So Josh is here with CareerSource. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Josh can help your business with employee uh, issues. John is, think of John as the private sector and Josh is the private sector guy. He's got access to money to help when you hire a new person. So when John finds you a new person, um, he can help you get access to credits for um, grants that will help pay for a portion of that employees for six weeks or something like that uh, in some instances. So look, talk to Josh after if you want more information about that. But we really appreciate the partnership that we have with CareerSource. That's how we're able to make these seminars free. Um, so we do one each month here at Daytona State College, and a special thank you to Daytona State College for helping make this free as well, because they donate this space to us. Um, we have two events coming up at the Chamber. The first one is going to be our Spring Fest. Um, that's Saturday, March 2nd. So if your company hasn't reserved one of those free booths, exhibitor spaces that we have, uh, feel free to uh, go on to Flagler County Biz Expo dot com and you can see all the information we also have the event up on the chambers website uh, but again because of a partnership we have with josh and career source and the city of palm coast uh, we're able to host uh, 160 businesses around the lake at central park here in palm coast for free and um, that's made possible by a grant again through career source so that's another totally free event that we have the whole purpose of that event is to connect residents with uh, our business partners and so uh, really excited about that event. Lisa here runs that event so uh, for us as the committee chair. So if you have any questions, reach out to Lisa or me. And uh, Dr. Pam helps on that committee as well. So really excited about that event coming up. Last thing I'll say is next week, I think, February 1st. Isn't it crazy to think that February is next week? Um, we have the State of the City for the City of Palm Coast. We do a reception after that event. So. Uh, it's a really high level networking event. If you want to be involved, uh, go to the Chamber's website and you can register. It's 20 bucks, so pretty inexpensive, and we'll have beer, wine, food, and hors d'oeuvres, plus the mayor and all the elected officials and community leaders are there. So with all of that having been said, um, I'm really excited for John to be here today. Uh, John Kirkman's with Spirion Staffing and Recruiting. Um, John and I have been working for over a year together now, I think, and What's become clear to me, and I almost wrote this in the email last night is, but then it's weird how you read emails. I was like, John has probably forgotten more than I'll ever know about um, you know, recruiting, retention, uh, workforce and talent development, and um, he's just a wealth of knowledge that's right here in our community. He's the president of Spirion Staffing and Recruiting. Um, so he's gonna talk to us today about all of those issues, and we're doing something a little different because it's January and this room is usually full. Um, a lot of people couldn't make today's date, so we're recording the event and we're gonna post this up on our website once we're done. So without further uh, delay, I'd like to introduce John Kirkman with Spirion Staffing. Thank you guys. Appreciate everyone coming and taking time out of your day to come and visit. So we're gonna talk a little bit today about becoming an employer of choice. A lot of your companies may already be there, but we're gonna see if we can maybe accelerate you and get you a little bit further ahead. So, to make you uh, heads and tails over your competition. So, I'm gonna set my timer here to make sure that we don't go over today. All right. All right. So, um, first thing I wanna talk about is, you know, let's know the field. So, how, how do we start? How do we even know what an employer of choice is? So, let's go through a little bit uh, and uh, discuss what that might be, what that might look like. All right. So. Do you guys know there are five, currently, right now, there are five generations in the workforce? Kind of hard to believe, right? Mm -hmm. We have people who are working longer, um, you know, into, you know, normally people retire at 65, now we're seeing people work to 70, 75. So, and then we're seeing our young workforce at 17, 18 years old wanting to go out and go to work. So, mm -hmm. five generations right now currently in the workforce. So that's a lot to manage if you're a new business owner or a small business owner, or even if you're a medium or a large business owner, because you got everyone kind of communicates a little differently. Everyone was, you know, every generation has a little different style. They all have a little bit different place of where they are in their life and what they're looking for out of a job. So you as a business owner have, have to navigate all that. So um, we are gonna make this slide deck available for you, so we're not gonna go over this in great detail, but you know, we'll go over some of the things at the top. You know, a traditionalist typically was born between 1925 and 1945. They're very dependable, straightforward, tactful, loyal. 
So you know, those are the, you know, if you hire one of these individuals, they're going to be at work every day. Sick, rain or shine, they're going to be at work every day, and they're going to be early, and they're going to work late. So I mean, they're very dedicated, loyal group of employees. You see, it's, you see at the bottom, employers should provide satisfying work and opportunities to contribute and emphasize stability. So that's kind of what this group looks for. So if you have anyone in your workforce or you're considering hiring someone on your team that's going to be in this generation, kind of gives you a little bit of feedback of how to manage them. All right, next group is your baby boomers. You know, there's um, um, baby boomers are you know you know the largest generation of workforce that's you know currently you know, you know working for us today. So baby boomers who plan to work past <coughs> 65, 65 percent. That's a pretty high number. So the old days of when you hit 65, you retire and you go garden or you go camping or whatever you normally do. This group here, they still want to work. And it's a very, again, another very loyal group of um, employees um, to have on your team. They're, they're very optimistic, competitive, workaholics, and team oriented. Not bad traits, right? All, all good traits if you're an employer, that's what you want your employees. Um, 10,000 of them are retiring each day though, so that's, um, you know, so it's only a small window of time that you have an opportunity to grab these folks at the end of their career that most likely aren't looking for the high salaries. So great to get individuals like this on your team who are dedicated, loyal, have 20, 30, 40 years of experience, who can train your new employees that are coming up the ladder uh, and pass on that information. So a very valuable resource, great group of um, folks to have on your employment team today. Um, for them, they like uh, they, they want very specific goals and deadlines. Put them in mentor roles and offer coaching and style feedback. It's kind of how you manage that group. All right, Gen X. So I'm, I'm, I know there's some Gen Xers in here. Uh, I'm one myself. So we're very flexible, informal, skeptical, and independent. 55% um, of Gen Xers have actually started companies. That is the largest group of entrepreneurs in our country right now. So that's, um, you know, these guys are out of the box thinkers, they're the innovators, the entrepreneurs. Uh, this group looks, um, they, they want immediate feedback. They want um, you to provide flexible work arrangements and work by balance and extend opportunities for personal development. These folks want to grow and they, and they want to be part of something. So um, very, very good group. Um, Gen Xers in the next four years will outnumber baby boomers. So this is the next up and coming group. So this is um, definitely a group that you want to get on your team. Um, most of these individuals have 20 plus years of experience right now, so you're getting a very vetted, loyal, dependable, great, you know, great employee. So, great, great person to have on your team. Gen Z, uh, up and coming group. Um, they're very global minded, uh, very entrepreneurial as well. So you're starting to see a theme here. Um, very progressive and less focused. 40% um, of Gen Zers want interaction with their boss daily sometimes several times a day. So if you are an owner, they want to see you a lot. So they want, they want to see how, you know, they want you to communicate with them. They, you know, they're very, they're very you know, vocal. They want, they want to have that conversation. They want to know how they're doing. Um, they want, uh, they're looking for opportunities to work on multiple projects. So they are the doers. They, they want to stay busy. Uh, they want to provide, a, they want to work, uh, work life balance and they want you to allow them to be self-directed and independent. So tell me what you want. Tell me how you want it done and let me go. And then let me talk to you like three or four times a day. So you can tell me how I'm doing. All right? So that's your Gen Zers. All right, millennials. I know a lot of times when you say the word millennial, and I'm sorry for folks who are watching this, are millennials, you know, when, you know, when you talk to the first three groups, you talk millennials, sometimes people roll their eyes and go, oh, the millennials. Um, but they actually are misunderstood. They are a, they're gonna be a fantastic and are already a contributing um, member of, of our great uh, you know, labor force. In the next two years, they're gonna make up 75% of the global workforce. So like it or not, they're coming guys. So get on board, because uh, they're gonna be the majority of the employees that work for us. So uh, again, they, are, um, they want to get to know, they want you to know them personally. So not much different than the Gen Z or them. They like that communication. They like to know how they're doing. They want that connection with their boss, their manager, their owner. Um, they like to manage by results. Um, so they want to know how they're doing. Um, they want to be flexible on their schedules. You know, this remote work, hybrid work, or you know, if my job isn't required to be done at eight to five, can I have some flexibility if I wanted to do seven to four? Is that okay? 
or if I'm a little bit late riser, I want to do nine to six, is that okay? So as business leaders, we're, you know, we need to progressively get a little bit more flexible and not be so strict on the way that we used to do business because how we used to do business since COVID has changed. And I think we've all have seen that. Um, and then um, they also want immediate feedback. So you can't just wait you know, um, a year to do your performance review. They want timely feedback, just like the gym disease where they want you to you know, meet with them every day. They want consistent feedback once a week, you know, maybe every other week, but they want to know how they're doing and what they can do to improve and how they can grow. They want progression. All right, so now we've talked about that. Your goal is to become an employer of choice. So how do you do that? So let's dig into a little bit of, of that. So now it's time to play some offense. So how do you build this team so you can become an employer of choice? So I wanted to go over some compelling workforce, workforce trends. So currently right now, we are in the lowest unemployment that we've seen in 50 years in our, in, in our country. Is anyone feeling that? Is it kind of hard to find folks? Uh, kind of hard to retain folks? Uh, you know, the great resignation, now it's called, we're gonna talk about it in a few minutes, the quiet stay or quiet quitting. So we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. Um, by 2030, we're in 2024, that's not very far away. We're talking like, you know, if we, if we you know, were just in January, so we're seven years from this, it's not very far. The global talent shortage is gonna be around 85 million people. That is a large, large gap. Now, AI is probably gonna fill some of these opportunities, which is gonna require individuals to probably be retrained and, you know, and go back to school or to be able to change career paths. We're gonna talk about that in a few minutes as well. Uh, there's going to be an increasingly challenge for employers to find people with skills they need. So right now, I know we, you know, the last three years we've been in the labor shortage. That's probably not going any. That's probably not going away anytime soon. This is probably going to be our new, new norm for at least the next seven to ten years. So we need to be able as employers to be more nimble. Uh, you know, we be, need to be more tactful and we need to be more flexible and open-minded. So how do we do that? So let's reassess your hiring process today. The way we used to do it, you know, we would, you know, you would, someone would apply, we would do a phone screen with them, then you might do, you know, and then you might bring them in for a single interview, meet with one person, and if that went well, then you'd bring them in, and then they would meet with someone else, and if that went well, then you'd bring them in, and you know, meet someone else, and you know, and you're going through, you know, three or four separate interviews, and you know, it could take two, three weeks to get someone even considered for hire. So we got, we have to think about that. So we need to relax or eliminate specific hiring requirements. You know, all of our job descriptions probably need to be revisited. Because you know, in the past, you know, we want someone with four years of experience. Do you really need somebody with four years of experience? Or do you want someone who is a go-getter, has energy, has the passion, wants to learn, and that you have people on your, on your team that have been doing it for many years that's willing to mentor or train? So maybe think about lowering your requirements a little bit so you are not disqualifying possibly good candidates. Um, look for transferable skills and experience. So again, you know, if you're in sales and you sell cars and you find someone who used to sell medical equipment, it's not quite the same. I mean, it's, it's a lot different sales process, but if they have the sales background, can you convert them and train them to sell cars? Most likely, yes, as long as they have the right personality, uh, you know, and they have the passion in their valley and they're hard workers and you know, they're, they're willing to put in the effort, probably will work. So think a little bit outside the box. Make it easier for candidates to apply. You know, the old days of, you know, come on into the office and fill out an application, those are gone. If you're not doing it online, you're kind of missing things. Um, faster speeding to hire. I've heard recently, don't know for sure, but I've heard recently, and I've heard it from several, um, several sources, that if you apply for Amazon for a warehouse position, so um, they, they, they run an ad, or if you drive by their building, they have a big banner that says, you wanna work for us, text this number. You text the number, it sends you an application, you fill it out, as soon as you start to have a contact with a recruiter, within 15 minutes, you know if you have a job or not. Wow. That is really, really, really fast. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't do that with every position, uh, but for a position like that, that has a high churn, and it doesn't require a, you know, a very experienced skill set, they've got, they've got the window down to 15 minutes. That's pretty quick. That is pretty darn quick. So if you are a, another distribution company and it takes you a week to get someone through the process, how many people are you losing? 
So that's a lot of opportunity that's gone. So we kind of have to rethink how we do our hiring process today. Faster is better. You still need to do all your due diligence. I'm not telling you to go out and make a decision right away and go, ooh, I made a bad hire. But you can't drag these in, you can't drag it out for, you know, I would say a week at the longest. We're seeing right now the typical time frame is about three days. So if you meet someone in person and you like them, you should probably give them a, you know, an initial offer pending whatever other screenings or interviews or whatever you need to do to get them connected to your company and get them hooked in. Because if not, as soon as they leave you, they probably already have an interview somewhere else. And the first one that comes forward with the offer, they're done. And then you miss them. You're like, man, I really would like to add that person to my team, but we took too long. All right. Think about a truer application or doing your applications online. Um, at Sphere, we do ours via text. So, you, you know, with We'll, we'll, in our ads, we'll like text this number and then automatically we'll send them, a, send them an application and complete it online and then we call them within 24 hours. And then within 48 hours, we have them a job. So we try to do everything very quick. Um, think about self-scheduling interviews. So if you have a recruiter or if you have someone who's responsible for that and they have a window of time, leave those times open for people to self-put the time that works best for them. Instead of saying, hey, can you come in Tuesday at 10? Leave your window open from 10 till 2 and let them pick when they can come, when it's best for them. So a lot of people are like that. It's kind of a new trend. And don't be afraid to do a remote interviews. I'm not saying it has to be your all-encompassing, but at least start with a remote interview. And if that goes well, then you can bring them in the next day or in person and then make a decision. Okay, but again, this whole thing is about being more open, more flexible, and kind of thinking outside the box. This will make you um, definitely a much closer to being a quarter choice. All right, let's talk about competition. You know, it's fierce, know your why. Why should I come work for your company? I, you, know, you need to tell me why I should come work for you and not your competitor. So do you offer competitive wages? How do you know that? Do you, are you doing, do you know what your competitors are paying? Or are you looking at things online for salary you know, um, services that will tell you? Or the better, um, or the, um, the um, business labor statistics. Um, that's another source that you can just go to and check. Um, you can call a staffing company. I mean, we, we, we work with companies all over the country, so we kind of know what the trends are. Um, healthcare, healthcare you know, do you offer healthcare or do you offer an allowance for healthcare? You know, know what your competitors are doing and make sure that you're being competitive. Do you offer bonuses or incentive pay? Um, vacation, sick, or PTO, are you offering enough? How often and when does it start? Does this, does this start accruing date of hire? Do you wait 30 days? Do you wait 90 days? What do your competitors do? So you have to look at all this to make sure that what you're offering is going to be in, you know, something that's gonna be of interest for an employee who's coming um, who's to work for your company. Upward mobility, do you have a chance for growth? Everyone has a chance for growth. Even if you're a call center, you can start people as a you know, customer um, care specialist, and then you can move them to an intermediate, and then you can um, you know, go to a senior, a supervisor, you know, a team lead, a supervisor. So any job you can put layers in to help people grow. Um, so it's just on you know how you word things and you know and, and how you approach that system. 401k, work-life balance is a huge thing, huge thing right now. A lot of people are looking for work-life balance, flexible schedules, hybrid, remote work. Um, do you do employee socials, holiday events? Do you guys get a chance to do, 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 at your company? Do you allow people to get out? outside of the four walls of work and actually mingle as a individual. That's really, really important right now to have that employee engagement outside of work. So they get to know each other as friends, not just as colleagues. And then office environment. You know, are you, is your location great? Is your office attractive? Does it have good lighting, good seating? Is it attractive when you walk in? When you walk in, do you go, this is a nice space? Or do you go in and go, if I was a new employee and I came in here, I'd be like, I don't know if I want to work here. It's dark, it's dingy, hasn't been updated in a few years. So all of that plays into an employee coming to work for you. All right, up your incentive game. I'm not gonna go through all these, but you know, if you do offer incentives, um, definitely uh, some, that's something that will put you head and tails over your competition. So you definitely wanna look at that. Um, if you don't have money to do incentives, there are some free things you can do. People love training, and it doesn't really cost much. So if you can offer a new hire, hey, I know we don't have all these grand things that some of your other jobs you're looking at, but we do pay for your training, or we'll, or we'll train you in this program, or we have a program in the house that will get you certified. Um, 
And then having a mentoring program is huge. Having someone day one that that employee gets connected with for like the first couple weeks so they get acclimated to your business. Someone who can introduce them to other people in the office, you know, what, what's lunch, you know, all those questions. You know, we've all been new employees before. It's kind of awkward, you're trying to fill out the team. Do you feel like it's the clickish, or do you feel like you're part of the team? So it's always good to have someone that's there who can kind of take you and you have a friend immediately that works in the business that can quickly get you acclimated to the business. And that will also give you a much higher chance of retention as well. All right, sell your brand. How many of you do social media, you know, Google reviews? Very, very, very important. Most employees, before they even call, if they see your ad, they're going to your website and they're seeing what your Google reviews are. They're reading what other employees are saying before they even call you. So if your brand is, if you don't have a great online brand, you are probably missing a lot of opportunity of great employees who are passing you by. So make sure you spend time on that. Very important. Okay, let's talk a little bit about defense. So now that we've, now that we've hired our team, now how do we do, what do we do to retain them? And how do we keep them, okay? So the competitive grass may appear greener. So people are like, yeah, I'm gonna go drive to, you know, I'm, I'm working in Palm Coast, so I got a job in Daytona and it pays a dollar more an hour. I'm gonna go take that job. Well, okay, well, how far is your commute? What time in the morning do you have to leave? What time do you get home? So you're working eight to five, but you leave the house at seven and you get home now at six. So you're spending two hours a day driving. Is that worth that? Is that really worth that extra dollar an hour? Um, fast hiring, again, some companies again are hiring in 24 hours. So one of your employees may go and apply somewhere and then they'll have an offer same day, next day. It's really, really fast where it doesn't give you as an employer a lot of time to talk to them and say, are you sure you want to do this? Or I mean, because you know, it's happening so quick. Sign up bonuses, I mean, you can see all the things there. But as we always know, the old saying is the grass isn't always greener. So again, what's your commute time? Maybe you're going to a place that has a, maybe you're going to be going to a place you've heard has a lot of high turnover. Or maybe they have a strict attendance policy. Or maybe they're not as flexible on schedules. So it's not always grass is greener on the other side. So when you talk to your employees who are thinking about possibly leaving, here's are some of the things that you could discuss with them to make sure they're making the best informed decision for them and their family. All right, employment realities. Um, the great resignation has shifted now to the big stay or quiet quitting. Anyone here of quiet quitting? Does everyone know kind of what that is? Basically, um, employees have said, you know what, I'm not gonna leave, I'm just gonna stay here and I'm gonna work eight to five, I'm gonna punch the clock and do the bare minimum. I'm not gonna give up my all, I'm not gonna volunteer for committees, I'm not gonna do anything extra. I'm just gonna kinda hang out and you know, work my next four or five years and just give them the bare minimum and then I'm not gonna retire. So that's kinda the new trend right now. So one third of workers admit to quiet quitting, 78% act like quiet quitters. That's just huge numbers, huge. Uh, what employers are looking for today? They want hybrid work schedules. If your company does not offer that today, I advise you to please, please, please think about that. Even if it's just one day a week. You know, and if, you know, if you have a department, if you have a company that says absolutely not, we can never do that, and you have a department, or if you have departments that have multiple employees, why can't you have one person work from home on Monday and another person work from home on Friday? If your department's still open five days a week, why can't you offer that? So get out of that old mindset that we can't do this, because uh, this is what the future generation and the future workforce is looking for. Um, a lot of people want career mobility, emotional well-being, that is very big right now. People want to have time for wellness and for mental well-being, so offer time off. Allow them time to go to the doctors. Allow them time at 11 o'clock a day to go to their child's school to get because the kid's getting an award. Allow them time to go do that, very, very, very important. All right, the big why. Why should you reconsider? Why should you consider retention? There's some reasons why. Again, due to time, I'm not going to go through all this. You'll have the slide deck. You can read these on your own, on your own time. But you know, 78 percent of job seekers believe they can make more money by switching the job rather than staying put. That's a huge number. So two thirds of your workforce thinks they they can leave today and go somewhere tomorrow and make more money. That's scary. So you guys, so we've got our we have our work cut out for us. <coughs> to keep our employees you know, working for us. Examine your retention and efforts, show employees how their work contributes to your overall company performance. Everyone wants to know what my piece of the, what my piece that I do, how does it fit into the big picture? They wanna know, and they wanna know how I'm doing. They wanna know how the company is doing. I'm sure everyone in this room probably does exit interviews. Those aren't bad. Think about doing stay interviews. Talk to employees who are working with you 
ask them what they like about the company, what they would change, and what the likelihood in six months if they're still gonna be working for you. Do stay interviews. Um, those are much more impactful and will give you a lot more information about what your current workforce thinks about the work environment. Um, ensure, ensure your employees feel valued, very, very important, and align managers' incentives with retention. So your frontline managers are the face of your company. Most people leave the company because they don't like their manager. Not because of money, not because of benefits, not because of anything else. The number one reason, and it's been this way for 50 years, I've been doing, I've been doing this HR for 30, almost 30 years, and every seminar, every place I've spoken to, I've gone to, every, every professional I've ever spoken to, that is probably the num overall number one reason why people leave, is because they don't have a great relationship with their manager. So if you know you have a manager in your group, that number one says, oh, it's, you know, it's just Bob, it's just how Bob is, or it's just how Sally is, that's not okay. Because that person is actually bringing your team down and you're losing a lot of valuable employees because of Bob and Sally. Fix, have conversations. If Bob and Sally can't turn it around, then maybe Bob and Sally aren't the best managers for your company. So don't be afraid to act, because your employees will if you if you don't. All right, promote engagement. Right? Again, we talked about this. You know, try to do some things at work. Offer, you know, again, easy. You know, everyone who has a birthday in the month of January, the third Wednesday of every week, we're you know, right, so for first the third Wednesday of every month, we're gonna have everyone come in the break room. We're gonna get a half a sheet kit from Costco's or Sam's or whatever, BJ's, whatever your favorite store is. And it's going to be, we're going to give everyone a chance to celebrate everyone's <coughs> birthday. It's pretty easy. It doesn't have to be that complicated. And it gives people a chance to connect, chat, talk, you know, outside of you know, being at work. All right. So think about things that you can do like that. Uh, bring in lunch. Uh, pay attention to employees' mental and physical well-being. We talked about that. That is very big right now. Um, make life work balance reality. Again, think about remote work. Think about hybrid work. Encourage breaks. Allow time for people to go to lunch. Allow people to have time to take breaks. Allow people to have time to get together and communicate and talk. If, they're, if they have a chance to get together at work and have 10 to 15 minutes to bond with one another, it actually really strengthens their, you know, their relationships with work and it actually will make them want to stick with your company longer. Because now I've got a bunch of friends here. The work may be okay, may not be what I really want to do, but I have a great team I work with, so I'm not going to leave because I love my team. All right, choose your skill gaps. Again, reconsider upskilling. Again, like we said, 85 million open jobs come in in the next couple of years. Think about your teams today. Do you have players on your team today who wanna to grow? Do you have players on your team today that can fill positions as your more senior population start to retire? Think about upskilling them. Think about retraining them into another role. So use your existing staff to fill the holes you may have in the future. Uh, focus on upskilling, very, very important. Again, use what you have and then backfill, you know, backfill some more, you know, backfill the positions that are a little bit more easier to fill. Okay. What's the winning strategy? How do we how do we wrap all this up and bring it home? You are probably already an employer of choice, of a choice. You must be able to recite what's different about your company compared to your employment competitors. Prove it and socialize it. Each of us have a specialty that we're great at. Do your employees know that? Do you promote that? Do you put that online? Let people know what you're really great at. Do a SWOT analysis with your team. Get in the room and sit down with them. Hey, what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? What are our threats? Sit down with your team. Don't be afraid to ask. And then work on plans to fix them. And do it as a team so that everyone feels the buy-in and they have part on building the company and, and putting them and moving it forward. Very important. Okay, um, then when you get to the point where everyone loves their job, you know, promote your progress. Update websites. Um, have monthly meetings with your team. Let them know how things are going. You know, we're having a great month or we're not having a great month. Let people be very transparent as much as you can. Don't leave people in the dark. Don't leave people guessing. Let people know, hey, we just signed a new customer or, you know, we've got, we, we're, we're doing this big push to do this this month. Um, don't be afraid to get in front of your folks and be transparent. That's what they want. They want to be, they want to feel connected. They want to feel like they're being part of something and that the effort they're putting in actually is moving the company forward. Um, get supervisors on board, very, very important. We talked about that a few minutes ago. They are your frontline advocates. If they are promoting what you guys are doing and the employees are feeling it, and then you, know, you have more success as an organization. Stay competitive in the labor market. Sperion, if you guys are interested, 
our, our email there is on the bottom. If you're interested, twice a year, uh, Sperion puts out a um, puts out a um, uh, salary a salary guide, guide and you know, we'll, we'll give this to you free of charge. And they're for the local market, so we can do like one for St. Augustine, we can do one for Ormond, which encompasses uh, also Palm Coast. So uh, and it covers over hundreds of jobs. So that's something that we do twice a year, and it's a free resource if you're interested. And I'll, find, and I'll finish with this. It's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change, Charles Darwin. So if, I, if you take anything away from today, out-of-the-box out of thinking, the old way of doing business is not the new way of doing business. There is not a one-size-fits-all anymore. You have to adapt, you have to be more nimble, and you have to be more of an employer of choice. So I encourage you to go out, meet with your teams, find out what they want, what they like. Everyone is different. You're gonna have to sit down with people individually, have conversations with them, have your managers have conversations with them. Find out what makes people tick, what makes them happy. Some people love to come up and be given awards. Some people are embarrassed and hate that. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather you give me, I'd rather you be bring you in, I'd rather you bring me in, in your office and give it to me privately than announce it to the world. So know your team, know how everyone functions. Take the time to know your team and get out there and you know be an employer of choice. Questions? Okay. Does anybody have any questions for John? I'll get you started, John. I just I wanted to. We've had past presentations about understanding your market, so your customers, right? Yes. And the different ages that they are, and we've had a presentation on that here in these seminars before. And what was interesting is today you're using that same look at millennials and this generation and that generation as um, being a part of helping grow your business. So it, it really seems like that's a key part of really any business is to understand the generations and the impact that they can have from the customer side or whatever that side of your business is, but also internally as well. Yeah, that, that is a key point, that, that is one. And then the other half of that coin is knowing their personality. So, you know, you can use a gauge from people pretty quickly within the first couple minutes of how they want to, how they want to interact. So if you go and meet a customer, client, employee, et cetera, anyone you go meet, and you have a conversation with them, and then you realize within a couple minutes that they're pretty much to the facts. I don't like all of the, you know, I, I don't need all of this open dialogue. I don't need all of this warm fuzzies to get to know me. Just tell me what you need, you know, tell me your story, let me make a decision, and, and then let me go. So you kind of have to read the room, and kind of know who you're speaking with, and kind of mirror what they, what, what their learning style is, and what their presentation style is. So you have to be, you have to be very mindful of, of that as well. So it's, it's kind of a two-pronged approach. Yes? Would you say culture also has a huge impact as well too? Like that, Absolutely. Like I said, Palm Coast teams are different to Big Home and Jackson Blues. I don't know what the terms are, you know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. I, I think in, uh, you know, your environment has a lot to do with it as well. You know, in Florida, you know, we're all, you know, a lot of people think Florida, we're very laid back, we're very easy going shorts, flip-flops, and tank top, you know, we're, you know, kumbaya. So when people from, you know, the Northeast come down, they're like, well, you guys are lazy, because you everyone is like, well, we're not lazy, we, we just, our style is different, okay? So cultures, cultures are also different. So uh, it's something you definitely have to be aware of when you go to visit someone, you know, you should kind of know, um, I know you can't always know who you're gonna be meeting with, but, you know, again, it's all about, you know, fitting in the room and reading the room and you know presenting your yourself in a way that's going to be you know received well from the other parties. So very, very important. Yeah, thank you. Good question. I had a question about like the quick hiring. Yes. So uh, I guess my concern with that would be that you do get the wrong person and you're going through the process too fast. I mean, but maybe that's just an old person's way of thinking. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think if you have, you know, uh, I think right now um, what's happening in a lot of um, a lot of companies is they're doing more panel interviews. So if a person has to go through three different, um, you know, folks in your organization to get hired, they'll meet with all three at one time or two at one time, and then maybe there's a second interview with just the final person who makes the decision. But try to get as many people in a room as possible. So you want they want to come to your office once or do a Zoom call once instead of making a multi-layer. Because that's going to speed up your process, and what's also good about that is 
you know, if the, you know, the three of us here are doing an interview, you're gonna hear my questions and you're gonna hear what the candidate answers. You may not ask the same question when you interview them, so you're missing some of that dialogue. So the more people you have in a room asking questions, it actually helps the entire um, panel make a decision much faster. But I wonder, but I wonder if that doesn't change the dynamic, because some people are very nervous in that in a group setting. They are, but in most of our world um, function right now, team, team environment is pretty normal. You're, 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 most people are going to work in a team. There's, there's not many jobs out there anymore where you're independent working, you know, um, by yourself, and you're not going to interact with anyone else. So you kind of have to yeah. evolve and be used to working with team. So, and it doesn't have to be threatening. I know when you walk in a room and there's five people there and it's like, whoa, that's a lot of people. But it's the people who are warm, welcoming, mm -hmm. it disarms, and it's not, you know, not so hard. You know, it's not bad. And then, you know, if you, if you do multiple, if you have a panel interview, you have multiple um, people who are asking questions, I always ask folks to stay in their lane. So, you know, if, so you ask the questions regarding HR, you ask the questions regarding company fit, you ask questions about culture, then you ask questions about the actual job itself. So we all kind of stay in our lane, so it's not like firing questions from all over the place and you know, it's disorganized and you know, we never really get what we're looking for from, from the candidate because we just, we're all over the place. So, yes? Could you speak to the uh, Florida being the right to work state? <clears throat> Explain what that means. Okay, so in Florida, we are a right to work state, which means for any reason an employer can end someone's assignment or terminate them. Now, does that mean that you would never that, that you're um, that you're free from any legal or litigation? No. <laughs> um, so um, you know, so I always give the example. So if you have a manager who you know, you know, the manager says, "I hate gray." You will. And if I come in today and I'm wearing gray, they're like, "I don't like that you're wearing gray. You need to go home and change, or you're fired." Mm -hmm. That's legal in Florida. You, you can say that. I can send someone home because they're wearing gray. Tell them to go change. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you know now, you know as an employee, I'm feeling like I can be retaliated against because why can't I wear gray? I love gray. It's my favorite color. Now you're telling me I can't wear gray. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mm -hmm. seem right. So uh, we are a right to work state. So you know at any time for any reason, an employer can terminate an employee. But again, on the back side of that, you want to make sure you do everything within the law and fairly and make sure that employees have an opportunity to fix whatever the issues are before you just go firing somebody. Mm -hmm. Because you could have legal implications if you don't. Considering that a lot of the businesses here are small businesses, isn't there um, certain federal laws that, you, that don't apply to you because of the size of your business? Yes, yeah. correct. Uh, there are you know, workers' comp, there, there's all kinds of different um, you know, rules and laws out there. You, know, you have to have at least three employees or you have to have at least 50 employees or 100 employees so you know again if you're a small business it's easy to google that online you know what requirements are needed if i'm an, an employer of 10, 10 or less people you know um, so you'll have to call the attorney at 400 dollars or 700 dollars an hour to get that answer uh, there are tons of resources out there that you can do that online as well but yes there are there are rules laws both state and federal that are um, determined by the number of employees that you have working with your organization. So some companies will use a staffing agency to stay under those numbers, so they don't have to do that new. So they just passed a law now, if you have 50 or more, 50 or more employees in the state of Florida, you have to do E-Verify. Mm -hmm. So now we have some employers who are at 48, 47, and they don't want to do E-Verify, so now they're looking at doing contractors or working through an employment service like us keep those numbers below 50 so they don't have to do that, that new mandate. What is that again? Could you explain? If you have 50 or more employees on your payroll, you now have to start doing the federal E-Verify. So okay. yeah, it's the, that's the you know, immigration. So that's, uh, when you hire someone, you have, to, you, know, you have to get their two forms of ID or a passport. Mm -hmm. And then you, you just have to write that on a form and you keep it in a book. Go through every audit that you have it. Now you have to go on to the um, the government's um, national website, you have to put it all in. So if something is sent to the employee, they fill it all in, and then you have to put it in to make sure it matches. Mm -hmm. All right, Josh. I was just gonna um, kind of add on with the upscaling. Um, so when you do that, it helps out a lot with retention. It's a high number. I can't remember exactly, I think somewhere around 70% um, that your employee will stay. 
Mm -hmm. Always good to invest in your employees. If you have a great employee, invest in them, train them, find out, you know, have conversations with them during their performance reviews. Do you love what you're doing? What do you want to be doing two years from now, five years from now? And then if they go, you know, I really love that over there, I'd really love to do that, then put a plan together. You know, well, that job requires a four-year degree, so over the next couple of years, you need to go finish schooling, and then we're going to put you in a mentorship program here, and we're going to have you meet with so-and-so supervisor once a week, and we're going to progress you towards that path. So when an opportunity comes available, you're going to be ready. So help people, you know, get people a career path in your business. Develop them. Yes. So you had mentioned between the upskilling and um, employee retention and trying to kind of appease to your um, audience, with AI kind of filtering through the applications that are coming through, how do you kind of find someone who may not be a direct fit, but has the skill set to change careers and be a good fit for your team? Okay, that's a great question. AI is so new and um, people are using it so many different ways and it's gonna be evolving over the next you know, 10, 15 years and it will, be, it will look totally different than it does today. Um, if you're using AI as part of your recruiting strategy, uh, I would just tell you to be a little cautious because if you are relying just on, it, it's just like anything, if you rely just on one item, you could be setting yourself up for some failure mm -hmm. because you could be missing some great opportunities uh, no matter what it is. You know, so, you know, so if, I, you know, if I rely only on email only, well, I'm missing the rest of the world. I'm missing the social media, I'm missing in person, I'm missing, so, you know, if you're a new business and you're only selling through email, you're missing all the opportunities of going to chamber events and meeting, meeting people in person and, and doing it. So I would I would be caution I would caution people to put all the recruiting into one box, one thing, because then and then you're really limiting and putting on the blinders, and you know you may be missing some good opportunities. Yes. I, I heard one of the ways that you can use a small business can be a staffing company, a staffing agency to help them. Can you name some more? Yep, so um, one of the things that we specialize in is what they call attempt to hire. So if you have, you know, so if you have an opening, we will find a candidate for you. And then you get to, you know, work alongside with this, your, your team gets to work alongside this employee for a couple months as a temp, okay? So it gives the employee a chance to make sure that your company long-term is what they're looking for, and it gives you and your management team a chance to try the employee out to make sure it's a good fit. At the end of that three or four month period, you know, if the two parties agree that this has been a great and fruitful relationship, you are already hiring now on an employee that's been there for three or four months, that has already shown dedication, that can be there on time, they have interest in your company, they have the passion to work for you, and that gives you a much, gives you a leg up over hiring someone on your own that you have no history on. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason, if neither party is happy with, with, with the relationship. Next. Next. <laughs> and no harm, no, no harm done. We help, we help that employee find and you know, help them find another employer that might be a better fit. And we help you find another employee that might be a better fit for your organization. And it doesn't go against your employment. You don't have to worry about any lawsuits. I mean, so it gives you as an employer a lot of protection and flexibility. And it gives you, you don't have to go through the managing out process. So if you have a bad hire, now I've got to warn them, give them 30 days to improve, then I've got to warn them again, give them another 30 days to improve, maybe warn them a third time. You don't have to go through any of that. It, like you said, next. So it's, um, and then if you have a business that has peaks, so if you need to ramp up, you know, we can get you to 10 people, and then, you know, eight months later, when your business starts to, you know, off peak, we can take the, you know, we can take those 10 people away, and then next year, add 10 more back. So it gives you a lot of flexibility as an employer. Great, great question, thank you. All right, please help me thank uh, John Kirkman with Spear on Staffing.